morning. It's Tammy with Real Southern Woman. I am quite late this morning. It's 1030 practically. We just got six, seven, eight, four minutes until it's 1030. So, um, but I cooked this morning and made muffins live on Card Valley Cooks. And so I'm late coming in for Bible study because um, I just am. I got up early. I got up at six. But I got a lot done this morning. So, and the muffins were good. I'm supposed to be drinking protein shakes. <laughs> I'm failing. I'm failing. But boy, were they delicious. I have got three more bananas that I have got to do something with today. And I want to make an orange cake. And I feel good today. And Chris just left to go fishing. I said, why don't you stay with me and help me video? He wasn't interested. So, whatever. So, I guess I'll be using the tripod and myself today. Um, hope y'all are having a blessed morning. And uh, many of y'all should be up that aren't normally up. And some of y'all probably gone out for the day to do your chores by now. Um, but... My show and tell today is a card that I got in the mail yesterday. It is called a quilling card. Okay. It says quilling is an art of rolling, quilling, and shaping small strips of paper to celebrate a cohesive three-dimensional design. It has been practiced for centuries. Historians have been able to date the art form back to ancient, I know I'll say that wrong, Egyptian times, where crafters would use a bird's feather, a quill, as the tool to coil the paper upon. Throughout the Western world, quilling has seen different periods of resurgence over the years, and today, Quilling Card has become the premier source of preserving and sharing this beautiful art form striving to keep it alive and flourishing. Do not just send a card, it says, send art. This is so pretty, are y'all ready? It is a painted bunting. Look how pretty it is. And it is quilled, and I'm gonna put it really up close so that you guys can see the paper and how it was shaped and coiled in the paper. Isn't he beautiful? It looks just like him. Even the red around his eye. So, I thought I'd share him with you guys. I've got to cut him out and put him on my refrigerator. I'm excited. Now, this card came from a couple. And their names are Kurt and Joy Gardner. Kurt and Joy Gardner. And I'm thanking them for their beautiful card. Um, she says that her husband, too, is a cancer survivor. And um, he got cancer. Um, and it changed his mobility a lot. And from the chemotherapy uh, effects. But it has been 25 years. And they're both retired and enjoy a lot of the same things that me and Chris do. So they sent us a card and I thank them for that. They really love the bird videos as well. So thank you, Kurt and Joy Gardner. I just love it. I am going to clip it out and put a magnet on the back of it and put it on my refrigerator. I also, I have two more gifts. I got a lot of gifts yesterday. So I'm going to show you one and then I'll save one for tomorrow. I'm going to show you one more. Let me run and get it. And the little papers that go with it too. I'm looking for the papers that go with it. Chris was supposed to. Oh, I see them. Okay. I got some dishes for my birthday. This one. It is a square baking dish, which I do not have one of. These are Emily. And I know I'm saying it wrong. Chris has said, he said, don't say Emily. 
it's it's uh from france now these i believe are on my website i had them on there and i just didn't have any see that so the square is a two quart then i have a lasagna dish that is a 4.7 quart and then he sent me a pie plate which is a 1.7 quart and I'm going to use the pie plate and make a chicken pot pie tonight for supper for me and Chris just to say you know just a smaller one for two people isn't it beautiful stamped on the bottom with a number and everything so you can get these on Amazon if you buy them, please go through our website just to give us a little bit of a little bit extra and it don't cost you anything extra if you do that so I'm gonna I'm gonna try to use the pie plate tonight and I also want to make a little shepherd's pie and I might make the little it in a square one in the square one thank you Bob he knows who he is I got lots of people that love me and it makes me feel good all right let's start Bible study today y'all ready I'm gonna do I've been waiting for the prayer requests until after Bible study and um, I guess I'll do that again today Today's Bible study comes out of the book of Psalm, uh, chapter 17, verse 7, and it is, Show thy marvelous loving kindness, O thou that savest by the right hand them which put their trust in thee from those that rise up against them. And I love this next one, so I'm going to read it. Keep me as the apple of the eye. Hide me under the shadow of thy wings. Don't that make you feel secure to think that he would hide us under the shadow of his wings? I thought that was so pretty when I read it. Okay. When we give our hearts with our alms, we give well. But we must often plead to a failure in this respect. Not so our master and our Lord. Wait just a minute. It says when we give our hearts with alms, which were prayers, we give well. But we must often plead a failure in that respect. In other words, we may often need to ask forgiveness because we weren't sincere, okay, in our prayer. And it says not so with our Lord and Master, okay. His favors are always performed with love of his heart. He does not send to us the cold meat and the broken pieces from the table of his luxury but he dips our morsel in his own dish and he seasons our provisions with the spices of his fragrant affections. When he puts the golden tokens of his grace into our palms, he accompanies the gift with such a warm pressure of our hand that the manner of his giving is as precious as the blessing itself he will come into our houses upon his errors of kindness and he will not act as some harsh visitor does in a poor man's cottage but he sits by our side not despising our poverty nor blaming our weakness i thought that was very that means a lot y'all i mean if you're really paying attention to what i'm reading just the i'm trying to think of a word when you read this 
to just imagine the love of God and how he is unconditional in his love and how he is not a respecter of persons, which means he doesn't love one of us more than the other, no matter what we've done and no matter where we've been. It says that his gift is so sweet that the giving, the grace of his giving is just as sweet as the gift. It says that he would come into your house and he wouldn't despise your poverty, nor even blame you of your weakness that caused you to be in poverty. That's a big deal. Because not many human beings could ever love with that type of love. Beloved, with what smiles does he speak? What golden sentences drop from his gracious lips? What embraces of affection does he bestow upon us? If he had but given us pennies, the way of his giving would have painted them gold. But as it is, the costly gifts are set in a golden basket by his pleasant carriage. It is impossible to, to doubt the sincerity of his charity, for there is a bleeding heart stamped upon the face of all his offerings. He giveth liberally and rebukes not. No, not one hint that we are burdensome to him. Not one cold look for his poor persons who receive his pension. But he rejoices in his mercy and presses us to his bosom while he is pouring out his life for us. There is a fragrance in his essential oil which, noth which nothing but his heart can produce. There's a sweetness in his honeycomb which could not be in it unless the very essence of his soul's affection had been mingled with it. Oh, this rare spiritual closeness accom accomplishes such joy for each one of us. May we continually taste and know the blessedness of it. This rare spiritual closeness accomplishes such joy for each of us. And may we continually taste and know the blessedness of it. If you noticed, this whole passage was about, he used foods and spices and um, examples through that. And I find it very interesting because most of us on here are foodies because you've come from Colored Valley Cooks. And it does help us to see what he has to say, Charles Spurgeon, about how sweet the Lord is. And so I found it very interesting that he used these um, as examples to explain this love to us. Um, says he don't send us the cold meat and the broken pieces from the table. He dips our morsel in his own dish and he seasons our provisions with the spices of his fragrant affections. Um, says when he puts it into our palms that um, there's such a warm pressure on our hand that the manner of his giving is as precious as the blessing itself. Um, he talks about when he comes into our house to eat and share these blessings, how he doesn't judge us. Um, how golden the sentences are that drop from his gracious lips and the affections that he has for us. Um, so it's just a beautiful beautiful passage and then he even says uh, the fragrance in his essential oil which 
with which nothing but his heart could produce their sweetness in his honeycomb which could not be in it unless the very essence of his soul affection had been mingled with it his honeycomb and that his honeycomb is what we enjoy as food as well um so it's a, it's a rare spiritual closeness that we have with jesus christ and we should know and continually taste and know the blessedness of it so i just found that very interesting and such a good bible study for us today um, we're going to go into our prayer request. This one is, I'm going to end with this one because it is so um, tragic. We're going to go ahead and go through the, the others and then end with the one at the top. Franny Winters uh, says, would you please pray for the McFadden family? Pastor McFadden and his wife were in a fatal accident. This is another one that's bad. I'll just go ahead and read both of them. We've had two, three deaths, okay? Pastor McFadden and his wife were in a fatal accident and he lost his wife yesterday. We have um, Donna Minor, who her daddy passed away a few days ago. And then we have Susie Whitley, who said that her daughter April was shot by a drive-by shooting last night which would have been the night before last and died later from her injuries that's horrible and i'm so sorry about that um for all of you who've lost someone that's dear um carla Bassor has a prayer request for her 84 year old mother who's having um hernia surgery on thursday She'll be in the hospital for about a week. The hernia was caused when her bladder was removed four years ago from bladder cancer. Uh, Jen, Jenny Chilton wants us to pray that her arthritis gets better soon so she can go back to work. Barbara Smith has an update on her progress. She's getting better. The doctors are treating her with antibiotics, steroids, breathing treatments, and chest psychotherapy. I could possibly go home either tomorrow or Friday. Thank you for everyone's prayers. So keep Barbara in your prayers while she continues to be getting better in the hospital. Irene Vasquez asked us to pray for her cousin, Emma. She has multiple surgeries on her colon and pancreas. And the doctor uh, has told her there's not much they can do for her anymore. She's 80 years old and she's not doing well. Um, I also had shared with you guys several weeks ago a friend of mine who has a very close best friends whose wife Beth is going through a lot of physical problems due to a disease that she's been diagnosed with and she's losing uh, not her mental capability but her physical and she's got kids and a husband and I had asked you guys to give to that cause if you could um, I may go ahead and share that again today, but she really needs encouragement and she does get encouraged knowing that other people are pray, praying for her and her family. Her name is Beth. So if you could do anything, at least pray for her and um, pray that, you know, um, that they can get what they need to help her physically in the house to get around so that she doesn't feel so much like an invalid and burdens burdensome to everybody else so just pray for her i'm sure it's really hard on her um and then we have one last one oh wait i've got a thank you for praying for me yesterday i got good news from the heart doctor this is d winston and her urologist told her that she has some stones in her kidneys but they're small and so they're not sure what's causing the UTIs, but it looks like it's good. So they'll just keep watching. Darlene Smith uh, said that yesterday, because of a horrible mistake she made, her five-month-old puppy broke his femur in his hip. They weren't sure his leg could be saved. But by God's grace, our vet found an orthopedic surgeon that feels surgery can be successful in saving his leg and healing the fracture. Dakota came into my life a few days after losing my mama. I know her hand was in that because of many things that 
not one person could explain in this journey to me. He is so very special to me. Please pray for his surgery to be a success for the next 10 weeks of recoup, recoup to go smoothly. Um, she's smothering in guilt and wishes, uh, and wishes, but Dakota's surgery are healing for foremost in her mind. Um, Darlene, I'm sure you feel guilty, but everybody has accidents and makes mistakes, so don't take it so hard and we will keep him in our prayers um so that is all of our prayer requests for today i hope you've enjoyed today's bible study and i thank you for listening and staying and listening uh, to what charles spurgeon had us learn today it was a sweet sweet message um, from our lord and savior out of the book of psalms and i pray that you would be with all of these people we have some very serious uh, prayer request today. So please take a minute out of your day today and bow your head in prayer for these special ones um, before the Lord. Um, we're going to go to the Lord in prayer now and um, I'm so encouraged that you all joined us today. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you for today and we thank you for each and every one of those who have decided, Lord, to take the time out of their day to concentrate not only on themselves, but on you. To take the time out of their day, Lord, and give you um, some attention. For many of us are guilty, and even myself, of giving you the attention you deserve. For you are our Heavenly Father. You are our wonderful Savior. You are the one that gives us these gifts and blessings from your table, Lord. And we should be thankful. May we taste these, as our passage said today, and keep them um, current in our mind all day, every day. Can you help us, Lord, to please focus more on you and not on the world? so that we can be in a spiritual mind and be guided by our spirit so that our love, Lord, could be more like yours when we are dealing with our families, with our friends, and even with, of course, strangers the most. May you be with the lost out there, Lord. May we take the time out of our day to pray for them and um for someone to share the good news of Jesus Christ so that they could be saved and live a joyous life um, that you provide through your son, Jesus Christ. Um, just be with us as we go throughout today. Be with those on the prayer chain that have lost their loved ones, Lord. I can't imagine some of these horrible things that has happened, um, fatal wreck, drive-by shooting, and... Um, just the loss of um, your loved one when hospice comes in. All of these things are hard, Lord. And I just pray that you would be with each and every one of these families today and throughout the week. Just um, lead, guide, and direct us. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. I pray y'all have a wonderful and blessed Thursday. I am going to try my best to get in there and make a cake today. I've already made muffins and had two, and they were absolutely delicious. So I'll try not to eat too much cake and lick too much icing off my fingers. I'll talk to y'all later. Love ya. Bye. Oh, a bunch of y'all wanted to know about my pillow yesterday. If you go to the website, go to shop now, and then go to health. It's in there if you want to purchase one.